Welcome to Average Joe's Pool. Today we're continuing our series of pool table installation videos. And in this particular video, we're going to be showing you the process for sealing your pool table slates using Bondo. Now, before we jump in, it should be noted that there are two common ways of seeing your pool table slates, Bondo, that we're going to be focusing on on this particular video, and also beeswax. Now, before you go ahead and actually get stuck in and do this job yourself, we have produced another video which compares the advantages and disadvantages between both beeswax versus Bondo. And there will be a link to that video in the video description below. So if you're not 100% certain that Bondo is the right method for you, please be sure to take a look at that video. Likewise, we have done a full DIY instructional video for sealing also with beeswax. And again, there will be a link to that as well. So if you need to check out either of those videos, you can. But this video is all about sealing it with Bondo. So for our Bondo job, what tools are we actually going to need? Well, first of all, of course, you're going to need your Bondo. Now, Bondo is not very expensive. You can pick it up on Amazon for about $10, $11. And of course, we are going to need some additional tools. Uh, we've got these, a putty knife or a paint scraper, depending on uh, what part of the world that you come from. Uh, also, probably some uh, disposable gloves because uh, Bondo is a skin irritant. And most importantly, you're going to need a sander of some type. Now, the sanding is actually one of the most important parts of the Bondo job. And that's because, of course, when it comes to the yeah, sanding process, we want to make sure that we're only sanding away the Bondo. What we don't want to do is start sanding into the slate, because then, of course, you're going to put uh, uh, undulations and imperfections into the face of your slate. And of course, that's something you definitely want to avoid. So you do have to be very, very careful uh, when you're uh, sanding. Thankfully, Bondo tends to be a little bit softer than your slate, so it's not that difficult to, to get it sanded off, but you do have to be careful. Now you can do that by hand using something like a, a sanding block, but again, you've got to be careful not to concentrate in one area too much, so nice large motions uh, will be fine. I'd recommend against using a belt sander because they tend to have a very, very specific line that they cut in, and electric ones can be quite harsh uh, for this job. So if you're gonna go electric, your ideal tool is a, a random orbital sander. And even when you're using that, you, if it's a speed adjustable, you want to use it on a lower speed. And also you wanna make sure when you're using it that you're doing a nice large uh, coverage of the area that you're trying to sand and you're not putting too much downward pressure on it. Just let the tool gently uh, work the, uh, the Bondo away. And one thing to be aware of uh, with Bondo, as I mentioned before, it is a skin irritant. So you're definitely gonna to want to be wearing gloves. You should be wearing a mask. Uh, you may even need long sleeves. Now, some people are more uh, susceptible uh, to this th than others, but it is a proper irritant and you're going to be creating dust. So you want to be careful with that. If you've got a, a, a vacuum cleaner attachment for your sander, then make sure that you attach that so you can get rid of as much of that dust rather than putting it up into the air. So let's have a quick look at our Bondo product here. Now, this is the standard uh, original uh, Bondo and uh, this uh, comes in a two part kit. Uh, as we can see here, uh, the little tube that we have here, this is a hardener and the uh, main product which is kind of a, like a, a, a very runny putty kind of stuff is in here. You actually need to uh, mix these two together. And once you mix those two together, it starts a chemical reaction. And once that chemical reaction uh, begins, uh, this stuff will be rock solid in about 20 minutes. So you want to mix it up in small batches and you need to make sure that you work fairly quickly. And when it comes to uh, uh, mixing this product, uh, if you've watched other videos, you've probably seen people literally dump this straight on the uh, top of the uh, slate and start mixing it on the slate surface. However, please don't do that. It's, it's not an ideal thing. You're putting uh, something that dries really, really hard directly onto the surface of your table. You can say, oh yeah, well I've scraped it all off. Well, if you scraped it all off, why is there a massive white circle remaining where you will, where you just uh, mix the product? Why take the risk? It's not worth it. You don't want to create uh, imperfections in your, in your pool table surface. And so be sure to mix it on something else. So first of all, let's take a look at filling screw holes. Now, which screw holes do we need to fill? Well, if you've got uh, screw holes in the uh, center uh, of your playing surface, like we have here, uh, obviously these uh, screw holes definitely need to be filled. But then in addition, of course, we have our slate screw holes around the outside. Now, do these also need to be filled? Well, that's going to depend on uh, the make and model of pool table that you're working on. Now, as a general rule, 
that you don't want to fill at any holes that the ball can't physically touch. The reason being is once you've filled these, uh, these holes uh, with Bondo, uh, it can be quite hard to get back out. You've actually got to drill that Bondo back out to get uh, access to the screw heads. And we'll cover that in a little bit more detail. I've got a couple of tips for that as well. Uh, so if you don't have to fill it, if the ball can't touch it, don't fill it. So how do we know if the uh, ball can actually uh, touch it? Well, an easy way is just to grab uh, one of your rails. Uh, we've got the end rail here. Uh, just put, a cup, put your uh, bolts up through the bottom. Uh, just two will be fine and get a feel for where it is in relation to the screw holes. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to temporarily uh, put these on. So once you've got your rail temporarily held on, you can, uh, obviously it's still got a bit of movement in it, it's uh, loose at the moment, you can uh, have, a, have a look using the ball to see if your ball can physically touch that screw hole and be sure to test it in the extremities in both directions. So pull it all the way back, see there it can almost touch it and you would definitely feel that uh, with your finger. Sometimes you can kind of just catch the edge of a hole just under the rail and that's fine. However, that is a little bit too much into the playing surface. So in this instance, on this uh, Olhausen, uh, we would look at filling at the end holes. And of course, for the ones down the side, you can do exactly the same thing. Set up your uh, side rail uh, temporarily. And have a look to see if it's a possibility that that ball could ever touch that screw hole. And remember, this will vary depending on your particular make and model. And the rule is, if the ball can't touch it, don't create extra work. You don't need to fill it. So hopefully that's allowed you to determine uh, which of your screw holes, if any, you're going to Bondo. However, before we go ahead and we put Bondo into these screw holes, it's important that we prepare them first. The reason being is when this table comes to be taken apart again, uh, obviously you're going to have a solid block of Bondo there. To gain access to the screw again, you're actually going to need to drill out the Bondo. And one very important factor is if you just go ahead and you stick Bondo uh, over the top of that screw, obviously that Bondo is actually going to go into the cross that's on that screw and you'll never get that out again. Now there's a lot of different ways to do this, but the way that I'm going to do it, is I'm actually going to put some uh, stickers over the tops of the heads of the screws. And that will prevent the Bondo from actually going into the, uh, as I said, the cross that's on the top of that screw. And so when it comes to remove this, you're gonna drill and chip out your, uh, your Bondo and you'll be able to access a screw that's got a good head and so you'll be able to remove the screw relatively easily. Certainly a lot easier than if you just stick Bondo in the head of that screw. So let's go ahead and get these heads covered. Uh, what I found is that fits these uh, screw heads pretty well is these uh, standard um, donuts uh, that we've got here. Uh, these are the ones that you use to mark spots on your table and you can replace the cue ball in the same place. These actually cover these screw heads pretty well. Make sure I have blown these a little bit there. Let's make sure you get any uh, rubbish that's in there out. But these are quite a good fit over the screw heads. And so I tend to use a couple of these. Obviously they have got the hole in the middle, which is what I'm going to address in a second. I like to come up the edges just a little bit. So I like, I like having it double thickness. That's good. Something like that. Make sure that's pushed down properly all the way around the head. Use my fingernail around the edge just to make sure it gets properly pushed down. And then of course we do have a little uh, hole in the centre. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use a different sticker. I've got these uh, code stickers here. These are currently a little bit bigger uh, than we need them to be. So I'm just going to cut them down a little bit. And so obviously all I'm doing is I'm making sure that I cut this so it's big enough to cover that hole. I'll put that in the centre. So now, of course, when that Bondo goes into the hole, as I mentioned before, it's impossible for the Bondo to actually get into the head of the screw. So when you come to remove this Bondo, if the pull table ever needs to be moved in the future, that's going to make life a heck of a lot easier. So now, of course, we would need to repeat this and cover the heads on all of the screws that you're going to be applying your Bondo to. And once that's done, another thing I like to, to do quickly before we look at applying Bondo is to make sure that your seam is uh, nice and clean. You can see we've got some chalk marks uh, that we have here. This is from the uh, pool table slate leveling video uh, that we produced. So we're gonna uh, get rid of these in a moment. What I want to do is make sure that I've got a nice clean seam. So we wanna grab a damp cloth, not wet, because you don't want uh, any uh, water dripping down into the wicker material that you should have 
in your seam. So just use a damp cloth and just make sure you've got a nice clean surface ready to put your Bondo onto. So obviously when I do this, we're gonna get rid of these chalk marks. The next time you see the table, these will be gone. So we're now ready to start the process of bondoing the seams. Now, uh, as mentioned before, any uh, screw holes uh, that need uh, filling, uh, we've put the stickers uh, into those. On this particular table, we're doing the centers and also the two uh, outer ones. And also what I like to do is uh, on these uh, outer uh, slate screw holes, I just put a bit of a label uh, over the top of it because uh, when you're being quite, kind of quite generous with the uh, bondo, it tends to kind of squeeze into the, uh, the screw holes there put a, a piece of um, a sticky paper or tape or something over it before you start, uh, then what you can do is you can spread just over the top of that, you don't have to worry about that. And then usually when I do the, kind of the, the, the fine pass, or I'll kind of take those off, because uh, they do kind of get in the way when you're trying to do your final pass. But when you're kind of squidging it in, it's nice uh, just to cover those uh, so we don't accidentally get any Bondo in those. So we've got our Bondo and our hardener here, and uh, obviously follow the, the uh, directions that are on the uh, packet of uh, how much you should uh, of those you should mix together. And uh, like I mentioned before, uh, it's a good idea not to mix this directly on the slate. I've got a bit of a, a card here uh, on, a, on a board. I'm gonna use that for mixing, so obviously I'm just take that off and throw that away at the end of the process. A couple of things to mention before we jump in and get this done. First of all, Bondo is a skin irritant. You see I've uh, got my gloves on, I've also put a long sleeve uh, top on and scruffs. Uh, the reason being is that I'm actually quite allergic to this, especially the dust. I find it makes my eyes close over. I have a hellish uh, allergic reaction to the dust from Bondo. It's not very nice stuff. So if you're kind of quite sensitive uh, as I am to these kind of things, make sure you use the proper safety equipment. And the second thing is about the, uh, the screw holes uh, that you're going to be uh, filling. Uh, it's a good idea to uh, uh, put as much as you can uh, in there and obviously we're going to scrape over the top of it. Now if you've ever uh, filled kind of screw holes before maybe you know with like wood filler and door frames and kind of that kind of thing you know as you kind of drag it across it kind of starts to kind of pull out from the other side so it can be really difficult to get it perfect uh, on the first pass. That's so what I tend to do is uh, fill them get them flush and then I let it set uh, for a few minutes and then I use uh, rather than use uh, my putty knife I'll come over it with a uh, like a, a razor scraper and just give it one pass over the top of the uh, screw just to shave off uh, anything that's not quite flush. And you'll find that it still won't be 100% perfect. It's really hard to get that amount uh, perfectly level uh, on one pass. So then what I do is uh, at the very end of it, I'll mix up a very small amount uh, once I've done that before sanding and I'll just top these off and get these uh, perfect as kind of the, the last stage before sanding. So basically, don't worry too much about getting your screw holes perfect on the first pass. And it's better to have a little bit uh, too little in there than it is too much. Put too much in, you're gonna have a lot of work and sanding to do, which is why I go over with the scraper, just to make sure that we don't have anything that's sat proud. And remember when you're working with the, uh, the Bondo here, uh, don't mix too much in one go. You're gonna do your two seams uh, separately. Remember, you don't get a massive amount of time to work with this. This will be rock solid in 20 minutes. And so you've probably got like six, seven minutes at the most to work with the amount that you've kind of mixed up. So make sure you do both of the seams separately. Another quick thing to mention as well, it might be worth putting some cardboard or a blanket or something down just under the end here, just in case when you drag your Bondo uh, across to the end here, just in case you get a drip or two that falls off onto the floor. It's really hard stuff to get off. You really don't want to get it on your floor. So, you know, just for the sake of uh, 30 seconds of grabbing a blanket or some cardboard, that would be a good idea as well. So let's get this seam bondoed. I've got roughly a golf ball size here, which is about three centimeters of hardener. Should be plenty there. Just make sure we give this a good mix up. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, screw holes. Don't worry too much about being tidy at this stage. It's all going to be scraped off in a few minutes. Just need to get some in the holes. Okay, so now start my seam, spread it across the seam, drag it down, what I'm trying to do is end up with as little bondo to sand as possible. 
trying to make this a really nice tidy job. Get rid of a bit of excess there. See all these kind of chunks and things. We don't have anything like this left on the table because they will dry rock solid. Slate just there. Put a little bit more on that. It's a small chip there. Make sure we get that covered. Now, you may notice, like on this end here, it looks like they've got some holes in the bondo. They haven't. That's the uh, super glue uh, shining through. These little uh, looks like holes. It's not. That's just the where the super glue is raised in that area. And my next stage is I'm going to move on to my uh, two holes here. So again, exactly the same thing, just get some in. And again, the same thing. Don't want all this excess. See when you pull across it, it kind of pulls out from the other side, just like yeah, just like wood filler. It's quite frustrating. This is why it's best to do these on two passes rather than one. Now see the uh, bondos kind of going tacky already, just after a few minutes. So we're quite close to the point where we're going to uh, give the screw holes a bit of a scrape over. You see that's drying, stop drying up. So I'm going to give the uh, screw holes a single run over uh, with my blade here. That one's okay. That one's still indented. Yeah, that one's okay. So just make sure at this stage, another look over it. Make sure that you've definitely got no light lumps because we don't want solid lumps. We want everything to be nice and smooth that we've got to work with. Because we're going to be sanding in the not too distant future. And that's a good idea before it sets completely is to make sure you give your uh, putty knives uh, a good clean off. So now at the stage, uh, really happy with the seam. And we've got hardly anything uh, to sand away, which is exactly what we want. However, our screw holes, as mentioned before, uh, are still a little bit indented. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply a little bit more uh, just on our screw holes. Now, there's two ways uh, that you can do this. You can either, yeah, obviously, we're going to mix up another small batch right now. You can either kind of fill it and just kind of uh, keep scraping the top off, see if you can get it absolutely perfect. And the other way of doing it is actually put a little bit too much in. So you've got like a, it's slightly domed over let it set to the point where it's uh, starting to get tacky uh, like we did before and then take your razor scraper and one pass across the top of it just to shim the top off but you can't do that uh, until it started to go properly tacky uh, because otherwise it'll just like you were doing before it'll just pull the bondo from one side of the hole to the other it won't be as bad because we filled you know uh, 90 percent of the hole now it's just that last little tiny bit so let's mix up a little bit of bondo don't need very much at all i'm just going to concentrate on our screw holes there we've got uh, i mean we've got we've got eight to do hopefully you've probably only got uh, the four So 
So what I'll do now is I'll just keep an eye on how uh, tacky uh, this is getting by checking the, uh, the little bit that I've got left over. The great thing about it being a chemical reaction is it all dries at the same time. It doesn't matter whether it's at the bottom of a screw hole, you know, the exposure to air has no difference uh, to the speed that it hardens because it's a chemical reaction. So when it starts getting uh, nice and tacky on here, we'll uh, shave the, uh, the tops of those uh, screw holes off. And what we're looking for is it to almost get like a, a rubber-like uh, consistency. Uh, so that when we uh, put the uh, brazier scraper uh, through it, it shouldn't actually stick to the blade. It's almost like just uh, shaving the top off of a piece of uh, rubber. And that might take six or seven minutes, uh, depending on the temperature in your room. So just keep an eye, like I say, on, on what you've got here, your little remnants, because it will all be drying at exactly the same rate, regardless of how thick it's on, regardless of whether it's exposed to uh, the air or not. So grab your razor scraper, and what you want is one nice, firm, clean pass. So once you've got them so that you're happy with those, obviously you need to make sure that they're 100% dry uh, before we start sanding. So if you're finishing with your uh, screw hole, kind of at the final leveling like we are here, you wanna make sure you leave it at least the uh, minimum of the full 20 minutes. It needs to be rock solid. Next, you need to be sure to properly go over the Bondo with your scraper blade. You want to ensure you have as little as possible remaining to sand. So spend some time with the scraper before you start sanding and get it as smooth as possible. And also be sure to regularly change the blade as the Bondo is a very hard material and dulls blades quite quickly. Now with regards to the uh, sanding process, as I mentioned before, you can do it with a hand sander using kind of a sander block or something like that. If you're going to do that, to make sure you do lar uh, nice large motions and make sure you don't kind of focus on one spot. If you spot a bit, don't start going. Because obviously then you're going to cut down uh, into the surface of the slate. So you do have to uh, be a little bit careful if you're going to be doing it by hand. If you want to go the electric route, which is what we're going to be doing, uh, we're going to be using a, a random uh, orbital sander. And the key to using it is uh, try and use it on a, a lower speed uh, rather than the faster one, because we want it to be nice and gentle uh, with this. Uh, and also when you're uh, doing it, don't press down hard on the tool, just let it glide over the surface and just gently work away at it. You're trying to take as little uh, away as possible. All we're trying to do is get rid of this really thin uh, layer of Bondo that we've got there. So we've rigged our sander up uh, directly into a vacuum cleaner and so hopefully uh, we can get rid of uh, most of the dust uh, as we're going through the process. It's not going to be uh, flying up into the air, at least we're going to minimize the amount that's going to be in the air. And with regards to sandpaper, we want to use something that's fairly fine. And so I use a 240 uh, grit sandpaper. And so there you go, just finished the, uh, the Bondo uh, sanding process. Uh, just go nice and gently with it. What you're looking for is something that feels nice and smooth. Uh, if you need to go over it as you're kind of working your way around and just uh, take a little bit off of the blade, if you've spotted a little bit that's a bit thick, uh, you can do that. But what you want to do is you want to make sure you don't over sand it. What we're looking to do is remove uh, the Bondo, get the Bondo down and uh, nice and flat. And so when you uh, actually look in your seam, you should, the grind marks that are on this table, you should still be able to clearly see them in the areas that you've bondoed. And the reason that the other uh, colour uh, stays there is because you've got those, those little grooves, those little ripples, and essentially we've got bondo in the uh, grooves, if that makes any sense. If you sand it down so far that you can't see uh, this uh, outline anymore, and that means you must have sanded down those grooves, which are the grind marks on the actual slate. So all you're looking to do is you're just looking to take it down as little as possible, just so you can get it really nice and flat. Remember, we're just trying to remove Bondo. We don't want to be sanding the slate. So the next thing to do is you need to vacuum off the entire surface uh, of your slates. Uh, remember, they are going to be covered uh, with dust all the way over, so that needs a good vacuum. And then in addition to your vacuuming, 
you're also going to want to give these slates a, a quicker once over over the damp cloth because you know, you'll, you'll feel it there's a kind of dust and uh, particles that all over these slates so get yourself a damp cloth not a wringing wet cloth a damp cloth and just give it a good wipe over and keep changing it in, in the water just trying to get as much of these uh, these little particles off of the surface of your slates as possible you want to get these nice and clean you don't want any little particles any little bits of dust on here uh, before obviously you fit your cloth you've got to make sure it's it's nice and clean and ready for your next stage and so there we go that is the complete process on how to bondo seal your slate joints now your next stage obviously from here is you're going to be uh, fitting your uh, cloth and you're going to probably be going to be reclothing your rails putting everything back together again now we have filmed separate videos on all those elements uh, bed cloth rail cloth and uh, pool table construction and so we'll add links for those videos into the video description below speaking of which remember we will also have uh, links for bondo so if you haven't bought your bondo yet please help to support us here at average joe's pool and be sure to use our amazon links and so before we sign off can you take one second out of your busy schedule just to be sure to hit that like button for us it really helps us out likewise we do have loads more great pool related content on the youtube channel which waiting for you to take a look at so also be sure to subscribe and switch on notifications and finally if we've really helped you out maybe you'd be kind enough to take a quick look at the super thanks option so thank you for watching we really do appreciate it and we'll see you on the next video